lesson I'm going to show you how to uh, find your own style um, using a palette knife. I'm going to use my own style in this particular lesson but I want to teach you guys that eventually when you get familiar with painting with a palette knife I want you to kind of learn how to develop your own style. So here's a lesson where I want to use basic objects. Um, I'm not looking at anything. Um, this is all from memory and it's going to basically be a wine bottle, uh, a glass of wine and um, a little piece of uh, small uh, portion of cheese. So I'm going to start off with a basic shape. As you can see, I'm starting off with the cylinder shape. I'm using the flat head brush, just using the um, a raw uh, umber color, um, just to kind of use for my under underdrawing. So here you just see a cylinder shape, dead in the center of the canvas. I'm using the 16 by 20 canvas, and um, I'm using pretty much. Um, a uh, simple composition. Uh, it's so simple but it still has a nice effect with having the glass, the bottle, and the um, cheese um, all right next to each other dead in the center of the um, canvas. So you'll see how it turns out. But here I'm just drawing another um, small tall uh, rectangular on top of the cylinder to make my um, a wine bottle. As you see I add the size to it to kind of give it that uh, shoulder look. Now I'm going to start on my glass. I'm just using a kind of U-shape uh, to make my glass, my wine glass, here on the left of the canvas. And a tall, sl slim, center shape for the bottom part of the glass. I'm just going to draw my line from my wine inside the glass and then the bottom part of the glass. And that's on the left of the um, wine bottle. And on the right I'm going to draw my uh, cheese. The cheese is fairly simple, just a, a nice um, kind of triangle shape. Let me define this right quick. Hold on. Alright, that should do it. Alright, now I'm going to start on my cheese. That's pretty much it. There's a nice even space between each object. It takes up the entire uh, space of the canvas. I have the line in the background that represents my table, and the top part is going to be my um, wall. Here I'm just going to add a few shadows. Um, if you're not looking at any um, real life, still life in front of you, um, where you don't know where the light source is coming from. I usually just kind of, as a rule of thumb, ha imagine that the light source is coming in on the left and my shadow is going to be on the right. And now I'm going to add a, a um, label for my bottle. Just a simple label. I kind of gave it a little round shape to kind of help give it the, give it, show the shape of the bottle. Here I'm going to add some shadows over to the right because I'm imagining my light source is coming in on the left. few more shadows definitely on the right side of this cheese as you know the lights not gonna hit that side so I'm just painting real loose with my brush just kinda give me an idea of where my shadows will be and where I need to add my dark values when I start painting And that should be it. Now I'm going to go ahead and paint and start with my um, background first. Well, I'm going to start with my table first. And here I'm using a paper plate. <laughs> I'm known to use a paper plate. I'm going to, for my table, I'm going to use raw umber, raw sienna, cadmium yellow, and some white. I'm just going to um, paint my, add my paint. Just a nice, even coat throughout their table. I'm not going in any particular direction. Just kind of up and down motion right now. I'm using a medium sized palette knife. Uh, the palette knife that I'm using is a Liquitex uh, palette knife. A little bit different from the RGM. Um, I just bought this one recently but I like it. It has a nice feel to it. I 
and the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to add a dark layer of the um, color first, and then I'm going to go back over it while it's still wet with the light, lighter tone of the mixture that I've made. And the reason that I do that, I want some of that dark, that 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 nice effect from the dark and light playing on top of each other, playing within each other. You'll see. Again, this is a mixture of all um, those colors that I just mentioned. Just got a nice, I wanted a nice uh, neutral tone, not too light, not too dark to get started with. And you can do the same. Now again, in this particular lesson, I want, I hope you guys have got, become comfortable using a palette knife. And I want you to kind of use this lesson as a way to kind of develop your own style. As you know me, I use a lot of strokes, a lot of movement, a lot of, uh, so to speak, splatter, so to speak, on the um, canvas and on my surface with the palette knife, with the paint. Um, sometimes Some people consider it messy, but I like it. But I want you to kind of use this lesson as a way to kind of um, experiment and you create your own style and develop your own style. Yours might be a little different. You might not like the style that I do, but at the same time, you can um, kind of do the same some of the same things that I'm doing but eventually kind of develop your own style I'm using a medium side pointed tip palette knife you might want to use a flat head palette knife so just kind of experiment relax and just try different things I apologize if I sound a little rusty I got a little cold But again, I'm just filling in everything, all my negative spaces around each object. Add a few shadows. I add a little bit more raw umber within my mixture. After I do that, I'm going to lighten it up with some white and kind of um, go back over the same uh, table with the lighter tone. And I kind of call this layering, so I'm just going to layer that lighter tone on top of it. And again, I didn't let the, the first uh, layer dry. This is wet on wet. And I'm allowing some of those uh, lighter tone and darker tones mix in with each other. And allow some of that darker tone to kind of uh, seep through the lighter tone. Just going to continue just kind of layering uh, this particular tone on top of the dark tone. Just add a little bit more white to my palette as I move on. And on the right side of the um, table, I'm going to kind of keep it dark. But again, still adding some of that light tone over to the right as well. Just kind of give it, make it a little bit more interesting. Now I'm going to work on my wall. I'm going to use cadmium yellow, white, and raw umber. I'm going to make a nice mixture. I'm kind of going to go for a beige color. Uh, with these three colors. Um, as you can see I have a lot of cadmium yellow so I want a nice glow but it's going to end up kind of like a beige tone. And I'm going to start over on the right side of my canvas on the right side of the bottle. And just kind of paint a little bit over the entire uh, wall with this particular color. Now you can do the same. You can try mix the color that, that you want you can kind of go for the same color that I have. It's up to you. Again, the main thing is I just wanted you to kind of use this example or this lesson as a guide to um, finding your own, I guess, uh, style, so to speak. And as I kind of move on through the painting, you can you'll see my style develop. As you can kind of saw some of it um, throughout the other lesson as well.
paint pretty fast, real loose. Not trying to go for perfection or anything like that. Just kind of paint loose. Um, just relaxing and just kind of going with the flow. Just go around this glass. Just kind of get in this small area right here. Try to fill in all with the negative spaces with the same color. And I'm going to kind of do the same thing I did with the table where I did the layering from uh, just putting a darker tone on the, um, a darker and lighter tone on the wall, the color that I have for the wall. Kind of like the same way I did for the uh, table. As you can see, I'm making it a little bit darker on the right side. Because again, I'm, I'm imagining my light is coming in from the left side, so it's definitely going to be dark on the right side. So here I just add a little bit more uh, raw umber to my um, the mixed mixture that I already have. And you see my color is not really even. Got, you can see uh, um, all types of uh, different tones within this color as I put lay my strokes down, which is perfectly fine. I kind of don't like the flat look. Unless I'm trying to achieve a a particular look, but this is more so my style. Um, pain fast, loose. Um, not really trying to uh, go for perfection or anything like that. A lot of paint, a lot of thick paint. I'm not using any medium in this particular lesson as well. You don't have to. Um, I'm using a fairly uh, good brand of paint, so I really don't need any uh, medium. It's pretty thick already, straight out the tube. Just filling in all those negative spaces. I'm gonna go back over and fill in the um, the space between the bottle and the glass. Since this is a 16 by 20, you gotta use a lot of you're gonna use a lot of paint. Um, a lot of my lessons I use small paints like uh, 8 by 10 or 11 by 14. 16 by 20 is a nice size canvas, so um, you're going to use a lot of paint if you choose to go um, as large as a 16 by 20. You don't have to, but um, this painting I wanted to, it to be a nice, fairly nice size. I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of get on the outer edge of this glass bottle. Make sure I cover up all the um, close edges to each object. And what I'm going to do now is actually um, layer a lighter coat or a lighter tone of this particular color that I have for the background. I'm going to do a lighter tone on top of the uh, color that I already have. Again, I'm assuming that my light source is coming uh, in from the left. I'm still going to add a, just a lighter tone just to show that and also just kind of give it a nice unique effect with the light on dark and the wet on wet. Same as the way I did with the uh, table. I mix some of the color from the wall with the colors used on the table while the paint is um, still wet. So I'm kind of bringing that paint from the top, bringing it down to the uh, table, the paint to the table, just kind of mixing it all in while it's still wet. And that's kind of my style. I just kind of developed that style over over the years um, just kind of um, playing around with different things again I love using that medium sized palette knife and I just kind of pretty much attack the painting so what I'm going to do now is start on my wine bottle I'm going to use raw umber, hookers green, cadmium yellow and white and um, the reason I like the hookers green but the reason why I use some um, raw umber is kind of that the hookers green is kind of intense so I kind of use that um, raw umber to kind of dull it down a little bit. As you know, um, a lot of red wine have dark green bottles, so um, that hook of green was just a little bit too strong, so I put some umber, raw umber in there just kind of bring it down a notch. 
and add just a little yellow just kind of give it um, just another kind of lighter tone to it so I'm going to start off from my right moving on to my left my darker tone of course it's going to be on the right I'm assuming that my light is coming in from the left and I'm just going to kind of gently touch the edge of the bottle and just work my way down and eventually just move uh, the different uh, values of that green uh, over to the left I'm not going to really paint on top of my label because I'm going to paint the label, the bottle label, the wine label a different color. Again, you can do the same thing. Uh, you don't have to use the colors that I'm using, but if you do, um, these colors will definitely get the job done. Um, you'll have a nice uh, dark uh, green that will work well will work well with what you have or whatever color that you go for one of my favorite parts of the um, painting is actually doing the uh, dark to light I like doing this is one of my favorite parts kind of mixing in the lighter hue with a darker hue since I'm not looking at any real still life I'm kinda just using my own judgment on when to lighten up my uh, dark green kinda just have it getting lighter and lighter as it get closer to the left side of the bottle Try to get a nice clean line. Sometimes it's difficult with that palette knife. Sometimes you just have to keep going over and over again. When you're doing the um, a nice clean edge, you, you want to make sure you have enough paint, but not too much. Try to add some highlights. I might be jumping the gun a little bit by adding those strong highlights, but that's okay. You can see I'm trying to define that uh, the shape of the bottle by using those highlights. Add a little yellow in the mixture, just kind of liven it up just a little bit so it won't be so dull and flat. Very loose, very free. Um, kind of want to show a nice reflection of the bottom part of the bottle. That might be a little bit too strong, so I may have to go back over that. Yeah, I'll go back over that. Darken up just a little bit. Add just a little bit more yellow throughout the bottle. Could add some red maybe later on. But here I'm mixing the green uh, from the bottle with the color from the wall while the paint's still wet. This is kind of my style. Just kind of just um, making different strokes and streaks through that throughout the painting. Just to show some movement. Um, very expressionistic um, very loose so this is 
this is pretty much my style. You can we are welcome to try this. Um, some people say I make it easy than what it looks. But again, just 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 loosen up, be free. Now what I'm going to do is uh, paint the bottle layer. I'm going to add more cadmium yellow and white to the color that I was using for the bottle. And it's going to have like a yellowish, um, more yellowish tone to it. You can still see the green in it, but it's going to be more yellow. So the same color that I had for the bottle, I just added more yellow and white to it. Since it's going to be dark over to the right, I'm going to add just a little bit more that green and that raw umber over to the right. Just kind of help with the form of the bottle. Since I'm having shown some of that value from dark to light in the bottle, I definitely want to have it in my uh, my label. For the border for my label, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you, I used a little um, yellow ochre to um, give it just a different tone for my um, edges of the uh, label. So as you can see, it's a little bit more intense than the actual label itself. So the, the border of the label, I used a yellow ochre. using the tip of my palette knife again using some of that scratchy effect throughout the painting while the paint is still wet I kinda do that spontaneously uh, there's no rhyme or reason to you know my madness but just kinda go with the flow and again I, I encourage you to do the same um, trying to go with what you feel again I'm using the uh, pointed tip medium sized palette knife you're welcome to use a different type of palette knife just to uh, get a different effect but this is an easy simple uh, format when I mean format I'm talking about the subject matter and the position of the subject matter to just practice uh, creating some interesting strokes some interesting textures um, to kind of help develop your style one thing I, I learned um, as a selling artist is to kind of develop your own style and kind of separate yourself from other artists and this is what I I developed you know over the years and it goes well with my jazz musicians and now I'm going to start on the cheese yellow ochre raw umber and white of course the, uh, it's going to be dark on the right side of the cheese so I'm going to add a, a little bit more raw umber to the mixture and then it's going to definitely be a little bit lighter as I go over, move my my way to the left of the cheese. As you see that color is a little bit intense, a little bit stronger than uh, the other colors that I have already. 
uh, on the canvas but I'm gonna kinda dull it down just a little bit by adding a little bit of white tone Again, you can see I'm using the tip of my palette knife to kind of help define the shape of the object. You can do the same. It's almost sometimes I'm like I'm drawing or sketching it in, sketching the paint in, so to speak. Get some more paint. I feel like my glass is a little bit too tall, so I'm going to bring it down just a notch. I still have some uh, that color that I use for the background or the wall per se to kind of that was still wet, so I'm going to use that just to kind of cover up that spot. Um, that looks a lot better. Glass is almost tall as the bottle. <laughs> and of course, I want to, since this is a clear glass, I'm going to put some of that color inside the glass. And this is the tricky part, especially when you're playing a clear glass. As you can see, I drew out the glass, then paint over it until the, I'm actually moving towards the glass, actually painting the glass. So. As you can see, I'm putting in the background color from the table and the and the uh, wall, and now I'm going to add the wine. Here I'm going to use ultramarine blue, gallium red, and raw umber. I'm going to mix it up. The reason why I'm using raw umber just kind of dull that intensity from the violet, from the blue and red, and kind of get a more crimson color, crimson color. Excuse me. As you can see, I have a different paper plate. <laughs> I'm sorry, that probably makes some professional artist cringe when they see me with my paper plate, but I don't care. some of that color throughout the painting. One thing I like to do, um, whatever color I'm using, um, even though it may just be a little section of that color on the left or right of the canvas, I like to put a little bit of that in other parts of the canvas. So as you can see, I put some of that in the wine bottle. Here I'm using uh, just a little bit of white and maybe some of the uh, colors that I use for the background to kind of uh, help define the shape of the glass. And kind of serve as reflections. Glass still a little too tall. I'm going to go back over that. I hope you guys like this lesson so far and like how the painting is coming to life. Again, a lot of my paint is still wet, so I'm able to uh, mix and make some cool textures and strokes. This particular painting took took about 30 to about 30 minutes, in all, a little over 30 minutes. Probably close to 40 minutes using the tip of my palette knife to kind of help define the shape of the glass with a little bit of paint on the tip of the palette knife 
again add a little bit of my style as I paint Add just a little bit more highlights. And maybe a little too much. But you get the idea. A few more shadows. I could add a little bit more shadow. I think I um didn't add enough shadows actually around the glass and the bottle and the cheese. I can always come back in and do that. But I like the way the painting is coming. Here I'm using some yellow ochre for the cork. Darken it up on the right. Assuming that my light source is coming in from the left. using the tip of my palette knife to kind of define the, the shape of the object a few more strokes one of my favorite parts um, of painting is actually adding the highlights I like adding value and I like adding highlights um, you always add the highlights at the end of the end of your uh, painting A little of that uh, wine color throughout the painting. Not too much. I want to paint the edges. Sometimes when you uh, paint on canvas, we tend to forget about the edges around the, um, well, I wouldn't say the edges, or more so like the corners of the uh, front part of the canvas going around to the side. Now, the actual side of the canvas, I probably use black to paint that. Or just leave it like it is and put it in the frame. But sometimes I notice if I don't paint those corners of the, each canvas and I put it in the frame, you can, is you can still see the white canvas so that's just a rule of thumb make sure you get the edges of those uh, canvases here I want to kind of help define the shape of my the shoulders of my bottle wine bottle one side is kind of a little bit off than the other sometimes you don't notice that to the end of the painting or when you step back I think that should be it. I hope you guys learned a lot from this lesson. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Um, again, this is an easy lesson. Kind of help develop your style. This is my style. And I will encourage you just kind of practice and do more of loose painting and just try different things with different palette knives and different textures. And, uh, and again, thanks for being a member of the Academy. And um, good luck on your...